Hello, I am TurboK1000 and this is part 2 of my inking tutorial video, well not tutorial video but my basically my inking supplies, why I use them and that's pretty much it. Um, I apologise for the ending, abrupt ending in the last episode, my battery died on my camera and it, well, there was no point in adding more because at the point I didn't really have any editing software so I had to cope, make do with that kind of ending. So hopefully this one will make up for it. I have to completely re-repeat this part here with the uh, with the nib supplies because of the fact that I can't remember what I did in the last one. So I'm just going to explain these supplies and why I use them. I use these supplies because they were the second set of nibs I ever got. They're made for calligraphy but I found they do quite well in manga drawings as well. They come with two nibs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different, well not nibs, but there's 11 nibs and one magnet and I use the poster nib at the end the most because it's the thickest and it's good for blacking out areas I tried using the middle, the smallest nib but I don't really like it, it bends too easily other than that I haven't, I haven't really used these but I do recommend them because it comes with a variety of different nibs now, next is my First nib set, my absolute favourite nib set, which is the, I have no name for it, um, basically it's a, if you look online it should come up with the first thing you put in when you put in nib sets, really. It comes with a single holder with a rubber end to hold, saggy pens, G pens, school pens, and maru pens. It comes with three of each, except for the maru pen, which only comes with two. And I recommend this to anyone beginning with um, nib pens. I actually recommend this to an intermediate artist as well. Because this is actually a really good set. And I have still got it. And I've had it since November last year. And all of the nibs still work. You make sure you clean them thoroughly. Otherwise it will not work for long. I actually have to clean them every time I use them now. Because they used to be quite difficult to use when I didn't. Uh, next is... Oh, hang on. I knew I'd forgotten something. Uh, damn it. Hold on. There you go. Sorry, I dropped it. This <laughs> is plastic. Um, next is my nib. I'm just going to explain the inks and my nibs in here. I've got Pentel Brush Pen Ink. I'll explain the Pentel Brush further on. But I only have one of these so far, but I'm thinking about ordering more later on when I run out. I've got cheap fountain pen inks, which are quite useless, so I don't use them anymore. Um, two sets of extra nibs. Um all the five and they're both the same set they're just pencil parts and other than that that's not really a lot these were quite cheap sets but I got five of the same nibs in two different sets so that was quite good next is my Pentel brush pen I would show you this but I have to like I only have one hand so I don't really want to get the ink on me so this is my Pentel brush pen the only brush pen I have so far but I have ordered more in my art haul so there's a spoiler for you so look forward to some art made with brush pens because I am actually looking forward to it. And this is quite a comfortable haul, very smooth, sleek design. You get quite a lot of ink in one. I've used it quite a bit so far. Next is one of my holders for my nibs. I got this one because it reminded me of Cruella Deville's smoking hold fag holder. The cigarette holder. It was quite funny. And I got one of the sets of nibs with it, and I got another set with two smaller nib holders with the nibs. And I got an eraser as well, actually, which I think I've showed in my... No, I didn't show in my sketching video. But I've got a blue eraser, a soft eraser as well with it. I haven't used a soft eraser before, and I can't because the Bristol board will smear with it. I can probably use it on, like, erasing drawings that aren't on expensive paper, but other than that, I haven't used it yet. Next is the Nano Liner, which is actually the first liner I used that got me into fine line drawing again. It's not the first liner I ever used but it's not it's the one that got me back into drawing this is the 03 I've got a 05 and a 01 I wasn't very happy because the 05 came empty which isn't fair but the 01 and the 03 have lasted quite a while I think they're running out now and this bit tends to come off which I didn't like because if you've got it all over your hands it's not really fun to get off again Um. so I got these liners and I used them on my claw drawing when we were smiling and taking off his glasses and I really do like the way they act I tend to use fine liners more when I'm, if I'm using ink drawings with her, I use nibs and ink, I tend to use these liners more for circular things because the nibs tend to catch on my paper. But that's only if I'm doing black and white drawings because otherwise every other media will bleed with them. 
And now these two are important. I'm going to explain this one first. I know it's at the end, but it's one of the most important. This is the first liner I ever bought when I decided to start inking. It was a Stadler cheap fine liner, and it had really good ink quality, and it worked really well. I only ever used cheap paper when I got it, so, you know, I didn't know any better than to choose different fine liners. And I still trust this brand today for cheap, easy drawings, but I don't use them with watercolour or anything like that, because I know they tend to bleed. But it's thanks to this that I got back into inking. And next is my permanent marker, which I do use for watercolour drawings, because it doesn't bleed. It's permanent marker, and it's really strong. It's another Stedler brand. And this one I used mainly the blackout areas because it had a smoother ink flow and it did less of the mucky lines you get with black and white drawings. So it looked nicer. It did tend to get on your fingers though and it did smear on other parts of paper. But that was very rare. Very, very rare. And next is a cheap ballpoint pen. I used this on my Crayola colouring challenge drawing. I had a grey one which is the one I used but I couldn't find it anymore. So I chose the black one for this video, but I recommend these to newer artists who want to learn how to ink because these are actually really good for inking. You don't bleed on cheap paper. The black, the lines are quite good. You get solid lines if you work right, and you don't really have any problems with it except for when you erase it fades. But all pen fades really. I haven't seen a pen so far that hasn't faded when I erase yet. <coughs> So I recommend that to newer artists, really, a ballpoint pen, sheet, sheet paper, learn to ink with them, then try moving on to these, you might find that they might work better for, than these. But these are quite good for like drawings that don't have a lot of detail. If you're going to go out of drawings that have lots of detail, get the fine liner set. Next is what I use to ink with. Um, well, basically my tools, I've got three of these now, in the last video I only had two. But I watched the um, watercolour video where it said you should always have more than one pot on the table, and I thought, ooh, I might as well get more. So I did, um, and I use these shot glasses for inking. People are probably thinking I'm a drunk right now because I've got an ashtray for sharpeners and a shot glass for inking. But the strange thing is, I don't even drink and I don't even smoke. <laughs> I'm old enough to, I just don't. But I use these two here for black and white drawings. This is for my black ink, and this one here for coloured ink. That's why it's pristine because the ink didn't stick to the sides, and that's all for them. I recommend only putting like <clears throat> this much in the bottom of it if you're going to use Indian ink because then you can just push the tip in until it t taps the bottom of the cup and then you've got enough ink on your nib that's basically how I used to do it unless you've got deleter ink then you've got to work until you get to the well and then that's fine so it turns out this ink is thinner than this ink so next are these pots which I use for watercolour and inking I use them to clean the nibs for inking and the pot uh, watercolour I use this for the water, basically. Hello, I'm back. I'm sorry about that. I had to go and do something for a friend, and now I'm back. And now I'm well, back again. As I was saying, I don't know how to clean these because they are wooden, and I assume that the ink would be absorbed into them. But then again, they might just be like skewers where you use them, and you use them again and again and again without washing them. And as long as they stay sharp, they're still usable. I don't know. I'll have to test that. But I'm just too afraid to in case they get damaged, because they did cost money. Next, I'll be talking about these supplies here, which are my coloured supplies. You can't see them very well because the sun's going down. But first off, I'm going to explain this Mitsubishi Signio Uniball pen. It's a Uniball Signio White Ink Opaque White Ink pen. And I actually trust this more than any other brand, see? It basically, it's a ballpoint pen full of white ink. And it works quite well, though it does tend to turn yellowy coloured over time. You don't really notice unless you really stare at it. But it's really good. This is a silver Signio pen. I got this for silver effects, mainly to sign things. Same with the metallic green. The, meta the gold. And the glittery red. All of these are really amazing colours. And I recommend them. I just need find time to use them. Last but not least is the vault is a pen that everyone seems to adore. The Sakura Jelly Roll. I myself am not a fan. And I'm probably gonna get hate for this. But I don't know whether it's because I got the wrong types or not, but these aren't opaque. It takes several layers before it even appears opaque. And that's not something I want with a white pen. I want something that's opaque and stays opaque 
So it's very comfortable to hold, it's very smooth and sleek and it has a lot more ink than the Signia. I still wouldn't recommend this myself unless it's because I've got the wrong type. But they're my, basically my highlighters and colouring pens and next is my fine liners, my coloured fine liners. There are my first set of Stedler coloured fine liners. I got this cheap set a long time ago and I finally found time to use it. Which then, they're, they're really good. I like the quality. Apparently they work well with Copex. I have not used them with my markers because I, I don't trust them with my markers. But the colours are really nice and you can make some good line art with them. Because of this I ended up getting two more sets with 30 colours. This is the Stabilo, Stabilo fine liner set with five neon colours and they're quite nice looking, they're really pretty. I've, I've used these before when I was a kid on a lot of different types of art, especially gel garden art which everyone should have recognised by now. And next, because of the Stedler ones, I ended up getting the Stedler 30 Brilliant Colours ones which have a lot of different colours. Again, I would show you them but with one hand it isn't that easy but you can already see there's got quite a lot of amazing colours in there. I've used quite a few of them in fine liner art before. I tend to use these in coloured pencil drawings and they're really good. And lastly, oh no, wait, no, this one now. I have my drawing inks, which are nip, nip dippable inks, but in colour with white, yellow, orange, magenta, red, two different blues, not blue and purple, even green, brown, and black. The white is useless, it, it's actually destroyed now. I can't use the white anymore. I wouldn't anyway because it's not opaque like the rest of them. They're not they're not opaque, they're actually quite clear. But I recommend these for anyone who uses nib art and wants to add a splash of colour to their artwork. Like I did with several other drawings where I just added like colour to the eyes and everything else was black and white. And last but not least, this is my Sharpie set. I've got three of these because they're on sale. And I find these to be really good supplies. They are really nice colours, they're really fine. The only thing I don't like about them is the smell. But other than that, I recommend these for pen users. Though I do recommend putting two sheets of paper between each drawing because I've had bad experience with Sharpies. So they do, they are something that makes me a bit paranoid. Um, so that's basically all of my supplies. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Follow me on my DeviantArt, on my YouTube. And I hope you look forward to the next video. Bye bye.